As we look at NFTs, you've probably heard me say this on this channel before, is that 95% or greater of these static or JPEG type NFTs will most likely go to zero. And I know that many of you holding these right now are going, no, no, that's not possible, but it most likely will be unless we can figure out a utility aspect of this. And there are some things out there that are starting to roll into it uh, in terms of games that are trying to figure out ways to integrate uh, a lot of these types of NFTs. But most of the NFT utilization that is being constructed around games today is really built on utility. We won't get into too much of that. I want to jump to Board Ape and just in general, where they are in the marketplace. Here's a story quickly from uh, Coin Telegraph. Board Ape Yacht Club NFTs catch up to CryptoPunks and of course flips the floor price. That's a big deal because CryptoPunks were really kind of the OG. And the price for the cheapest Board Ape now is 53.9 ETH or $215,000. So you've got to be pretty much a um, full-time whale or a celebrity to be purchasing these at this point. So I think that is a factor that continues to be a little bit concerning, at least to me when I look at these projects, for, especially for people that are trying to collect NFTs and make this into it. Even though I think last year, early, early players in the NFT space made some obviously big bank. The question is, will 2022 bring that? I think that's going to be the thing we'll see kind of start to uh, become reality on where some of these projects are moving. If you look at the, let's just look at the floor price right here. We'll go to Board 8 Yacht Club, uh, floor price 7199. Uh, this is in the last seven days. You can kind of see the over the all time right here in terms of performance. This is all the way back into August uh, 21st. This was around 18 ETH, quite a bit big difference of where we are sitting right now at 72.5 ETH. So a pretty significant jump, obvious for obvious reasons. This has been able to flip, of course, CryptoPunks. There are many things that are happening though within the space. And, and the key here, I think that people will forget is that when you look at a collection that is 10,000 NFTs, each of them costing around $200,000 right now, the big question is really can they sustain and also whether or not these projects can start to move into other aspects. You know, you know this, we've talked about this before about licensing deals play to earn games, all those kind of things that could play into these kind of applications. And I'm, I'm going to kind of just show you a couple of things here. This was one piece right here, OpenSea NFT trading volume. This obviously was surging as Bored Ape Mania intensifies. We've seen, this is something that the guys kind of in the crypto pit mentioned to me just a few minutes ago is that really if you look at a lot of the projects that are starting to really pop, everything's kind of monkey related. So it has that allure of being just one of those sexy, you know, very interesting and intriguing NFTs. And you get these things every once in a while, especially in pop culture. Pop culture is in, is very difficult to identify who the winners are, how you're going to know when a sneaker is going great, when a, a new emerging indie game is going to pop it off. There are many factors that come into this, and most of it is pop culture accepting this, just like social media. If you look at influencers, all those kind of things. You never really know who's going to be that next hit. And I think that's been the case with uh, Board 8s and just their, you know, their whole approach to why they've been able to jump off of the charts, especially around um, what we're seeing on OpenSea. The other aspect is this whole uh, component of really kind of jumping to that next level. This is where we started to see the Serum application for um, the Mutant side of mutant apes. And I think that's what we're going to continue to see is as we look at this project, and, and this I, I guess would be my question to you guys, if you're watching this, have you seen any other projects that you feel have similarities to this? I've bought a lot of NFTs in the last year, most of which have devalued. I've had a couple that have hit, but for the most part, it's a, it's a much lower percentage of wins than I've had in low cap gems or gaming stocks or gaming uh, projects and tokens, or even in just traditional um, top 100, you know, cryptocurrencies. So my question to you, are you finding NFTs that you're making money on? And are there projects out there that you think will be able to, not, maybe not surpass, but at least get up to the level of where Board Apes has been able to kind of launch from? I'm just kind of curious. I want to get you guys' uh, input. Just to show you the level in which 
this project is moving. Look at this right here. Board Ape Yacht Club creators just signed with the same talent manager that represents Britney Spears. And of course, The weekend. To me, that puts a lot of, I think, the gravitas of where this is going. And when I look at, at just kind of the element of whether or not a project can really kind of go to that next level, this is usually one of the key indicators that helps it make its leap. It's usually when you start to see so much pop culture interest that now you need a pop culture you know, manager. I think that's going to be interesting for Yuga Labs to kind of transition and really kind of move to this layer because this is really a lot of different kinds of licensing deals will be coming their way. There's going to be obviously the play to earn. We've got some partnerships that I'll show you here quickly. Uh, but there are a lot of things that I think are coming down the pipe that are really going to kind of change the format in which this all comes together. Here was a piece on Hype Beast that basically just said, hey, they've teamed up with Hong Kong-based Animoca Brands. You recognize this, obviously, because of the coverage we do on Play to Earn Gaming. And uh, this is, I think, just obviously the, the next step for them. And we've talked about this before. Soon there would be a Play to Earn game. Yes, there will be licensing. Could there be something in the real next level of where this project could go. And I'm, I'm thinking when you, if you think of a element of branding, some, and I don't want to put them in the classification of something like a Nike or a sports product that has been able to really elevate. But if you look at something like say, I don't know, Supreme would be a good example. And then there are several other designers, whether there's Japanese designers, European designers that have been able to create this culture around their own brand. I think that's where Board Apes is kind of going. And if you look at this tweet, it kind of talks uh, just to that point. Excited about the announcement with Board Ape Yacht Club, create play to earn blockchain game uh, utilizing the NFTs. And then uh, as you will recognize when we start to see this kind of thing happen, this could be one of those projects that could be one of the titans once that this ICO uh, and IDO gets ready to go out, I think this would be an absolute barn burner. You think monkey balls, this would be times maybe 1,000 of what the kind of hype that we would see around this. So lots happening there. Definitely uh, uh, really moving in the right direction. This was something also that was over on Twitter that I thought was interesting in terms of their, um, their roadmap. Uh, and of course, you, you said the treasure hunt, which I really love, but you've got this whole element of things in here, and it all kind of ends up over here in a little place called Sandbox Miami 2035, Bay C VX Ape, so virtual experience. You've got the Miami Clubhouse IRL. Is there maybe the next layer of real nightclubs involved here? That's where all of this starts to play into the whole aspect of where some of the pop culture plays into this. And I mean, if you just remember some of the acquirers of Board Apes, including Snoop Dogg, now here recently with Eminem. I think we have a piece on Eminem here coming in. Uh, we'll go into some brands, but I just want to show you what Eminem did on this right here. Yeah, right here is the tweet on Eminem. So this is, of course, the guy who uh, sold his ape to Eminem. Thanks to Eminem for buying an ape. Joining the club, Mattis, let, let me write a lyric on the next signal, which, uh, single, which I love. And I think that is the, the trigger here. That's one of the keys that could really kind of transcend that digital aspect of a brand. And there's been a handful of digital brands that have been able to leap off the page like this. I don't know of many that have been able to do it to this scale, especially if you look at where this might go in terms of adoption. If, if it does and if we can see a play to earn game uh, become something of a reality here. But the branding side of this is going to be big. Here's Adidas, Adidas who's planned to rule the metaverse with Board Ape, uh, Yacht Club, and NFTs. This is where the, the license will come to play. Next up is sneakers. Next up will be apparel. All of that is coming. And I know there are already you know certain aspects of apparel and, and even other types of uh, active wear and things of that nature out there with Board Apes. But just to see the big guys really kind of rolling in is a pretty uh, significant scenario here. And of course, right here, Rolling Stone, limited edition zine. Now you're getting into print modifications. Uh, there could be more around all sorts of new elements of art that could become somewhat even more so collectible in real life. Could that become a piece that really starts to move in this direction? 
I'm really intrigued with how this all kind of moves to the next level. And when you look at NFTs in general, the question I think a lot of people will continue to ask, is it over? And, and that I think is going to be a big one and it's a relevant question that everybody should be asking. Are you investing in projects that are static JPEGs? That, and there's a lot of creative ones out there. I, don't, I mean, if you get on OpenSea, absolutely a ton of creator, creative uh, projects that are out there. But in my opinion, I feel like this is one of those that this is kind of a one hit wonder. Maybe, maybe we get one or two more that come out of this, but the number of projects that we will have to mill through to get to the next board ape, I think is gonna be a challenge unless we get into utility aspects and that's where the play to earn and all of those uh, components really kind of come to play. The other uh, piece here is Universal forms a metaverse band based on the Bore Yacht Club. This is uh, the Gorillas inspired virtual group. Again, just more use case. This guy, these guys are just jumping all over the place. Then you look here on Timbal and launching a production company for uh, Ape NFT owners. I think that's going to be a big factor here as we start to see the owners themselves kind of move into uh, the area of some of these really interesting and unique clubs. And I think influencers will play into this for the valuation of this because this could really become a rich man's game in terms, just like art, if you think about where real you know, collectible art has moved, the cycles in which those types of big parties, art galleries, what we see in London, New York, Los Angeles, kind of the evolution of how that art creates value and continues to appreciate in value. Could we see that happen and transcend from where we're going to see things, uh, especially around the Bored Ape stuff? I wanted to jump into a couple of other items right here, and that is the Mutant Ape. Uh, Yacht Club NFT, just to show you the fact that a derivative can also jump off the page. And this is one of those, again, here's an eight uh, ETH floor price this last seven days. And if you look at this one back here in September, when we saw the launch on this one, and you had a 5.5 ETH average, and then we had this nice little spike right here to 32 ETH. And then pretty much this new kind of baseline, which is where we're running right now at 30, yeah, is that right? Or eight ETH. 32, uh, yeah, $32,000 right, right at that. So you've got a pretty nice run of where it's coming right now, of where it was at the seven, yep, 80. So this continuing to see massive growth, I think, on just the derivatives, which really gets into that. And just as a reminder, serums for Board Ape Yacht Club members, it's one way to create a mutant when the Board Ape ingests a viral amount of mutant serum. This gives you kind of, this really kind of creates that whole element around utility within the NFT, and that's, of course, an NFT morphing. Now, will we see more of that? I think most likely because this particular strategy is not something I think is going to be just unique to Board Ape Yacht Clubs. I think we are going to see this happen on some other uh, aspects of uh, just mutant the apes. If you look, go back here, if a Board Ape in, ingests M1 or M2 serum, the resulting mutant will retain traits of the original eight, if a board ape goes into an M3, who knows? So that's kind of the element there. There's the M2 Curtis. There's the M1 Curtis. And you can kind of see where it goes on here. Distribution and pricing. 10,000 mutant serums have been airdropped to all uh, board ape token holders. This again was a great, I think a great strategy for how they've continued to build on the brand itself and just made it very interesting and also fun for someone who owned and maybe bought one of these in the early stage and have been able to just, you know, make some bank on this. So good for them. Good for you guys that were out there early. Now, and I think that's the question is, is it worth it to go out there and spend, let's say you have $10,000 and you want to do something really risky. The likelihood is you're probably going to look at NFTs, play to earn gaming, maybe some high risk tokens, uh, that you'd be able to go on. Would I recommend something like this? Probably not, in the sense that I feel like this is such a unique project and such a unique opportunity versus if I looked at play to earn gaming or if I look at even you know risky tokens, I feel like many of those applications have a better chance of you know going big for you. Now, is it a comparison that maybe this is a one in 1,000 opportunity? where maybe a play to earn game is like a one in 100 or maybe a one in 200. So much better ratios in odds if you look at how this might go. So I don't know, I'm, I'm still curious and on the fence about static JPEG NFTs. 
a lot of people have talked about this, and I think even Gary V, Gary v mentioned this not too long ago, is that he thinks 99, 99% of it is going to go to zero. But there's going to be one or two that are going to hit it just like this. So obviously, if you guys are listening in over on the podcast right now, make sure and stay tuned. We love to get your feedback on these. And, and if you are interested in NFTs, I'm really curious if you are more interested in in-game asset NFTs, static NFTs like this, or the evolution of other instruments that are happening in the crypto space, because we're seeing financial NFTs, all kinds of things that are going to be start blowing out into an NFT application. What are you most interested in that you think maybe is the next generation of where NFTs are going to be going? Of course, if you have not subscribed to the YouTube channel right now is the number one thing you can do is jump in right here, subscribe to the channel, give us a few likes if you like this uh, particular topic or if others, check out some of our other videos. And of course, you can always join the Diamond Circle. It's the best thing to do in terms of information and also a lot of our ramp up of content and also our own airdrops of prizes and digital assets back to you. If you want to reach me, do it on Twitter, at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.